new ropes, wires, and springs are amazing new blocks, but also quite confusing to use. So let me show you everything that we can now build that was impossible before. Starting off with wires, and in my opinion, the most game-changing block they have ever added. They have two properties you can change, the length and the angle limit. So here I placed three wires, one with a default length, one with a higher length, and one with a lower length. And when you actually launch these, as you can see, it does about exactly what you would expect. The one with the default stays the same, the higher length actually gets quite a bit longer, and the one with a lower length gets shorter. But one thing that's actually very important is that you can also change this afterwards. So if I set it now to like two, Abada boom! It gets insanely short. And that property right there makes something insane possible that I will show you in just a second. And here we have the wires with the angle limit changed. Now, the angle limit is a little bit more complicated. You can change it all the way from 0 to 180, but the default is set to 90. And when I drop these, what you're going to see is pretty interesting. So here we go. As you can see, the default that can only rotate up to 90 degrees will lay perfectly flat. Now, it can rotate anywhere within 90 degrees, as you can see right here. But the one that is set to 180, as you can see, can literally spin in any direction at once. Now, right here, I have one that is set to 45, which means that it can only rotate within 45 degrees. But actually, more interestingly, there is one that is standing straight up. And that is because the angle limit is actually set to zero. So let me show you exactly why I think this stuff is going to be absolutely game changing, starting off with a 360 degree hinge. Now, this is something that we used to build for anything from train carts to snakes. Now, as you can see, this block is loosely dragging behind me, which is exactly what you would expect to see. But we can now actually do this way less complicated. So here we have the new way of doing this. And literally all you need is a single wire. And as you can see, this block is moving behind me so freaking nice, dude. I mean, it's way smoother. It's way easier to build. It is just simply a way better way of doing this. But actually, something that makes this the undisputed champion is the fact that you can change the angle limit. So as you can see, right here, it's set to zero. So this thing is literally sticking behind me like glue. But I could also set it to like 10 degrees. So this will only rotate a tiny bit. It's going to be so useful. And that is far from the last thing that makes these wires great. Because to be honest, they might as well have had a second name. That name being gears. Because they actually allow you to perfectly copy over rotation from anywhere to any other place. So right here, we have a wheel that's going to be spinning this wire. And this wire is going to be spinning that block right there. And as you can see, it is a perfect copy. Dude, that is so good. And actually, one thing that's pretty crazy is that this works on any angle. So yeah, this wire right here is like absolutely glitching through this block right here, but it's still going to perfectly copy that rotation. And actually, even crazier is the fact that you can do this for multiple blocks. For example, think about train wheels, where you need four wheels that are perfectly in sync. And now we can actually do that. Like, Look at how perfect that is. And lastly, there is now one thing that you can do with wires that was previously impossible. And that is this little structure right here. Now, you might be looking at this and think to yourself, what am I looking at? So let me explain. This part of the build right here is anchored off. And let's say we wanted to attach this piece right here to that part. Now, all we got to do because of that wire is simply unanchor it. And as you can see, it perfectly connects. And that is simply because we placed it long and then we set the length to two. Now, the reason that this is absolutely game changing is because of what it allows us to do right here. So we have the exact same structure, but we just stacked it 10 times. So let's say we have an absolutely giant build that we want to reattach together. Well, about a boom, we just did it. And the absolute craziest part is that we can actually walk over this and there is no glitching going on. And this part right here is still unanchored. Now, you might be wondering what the weight limit is, and honestly, so was I. So I got a little bit curious, and this block right here that you've been looking at actually has every single metal block that I own attached to it. So uh, this one wire right here is carrying about, how many blocks is that? 88,000 metal blocks. So I think it's safe to say that you could build a really, really big, heavy build and reattach it together later. Then for our next block, we have the ropes. And lucky for us, the least complicated of the three because it only has one setting, the length. And changing it does exactly what you expect. So when we unanchor these blocks, as you can see, oh, <laughs> yeah, the ropes don't really have any structure to them. So when you drop them like this, I mean, they just simply flop down. So instead you actually want to hang them. So here you go. As you can see, the longer rope gets longer, the shorter one gets shorter, and actually, 
they do have a little bit of bounce to them. So when I get this thing up and I let it fall back down, as you can see, there is a little bit of a bounce to it. And actually, the ropes might be even better at doing what we did earlier with these 360 degree hinges, because as you can see, it is like even looser. There is no length to it that you got to force. I can literally put these right next to each other or get them very far apart. With these ones, no matter what, it will at least be a certain distance away from there. And then lastly, we have the springs, which are by far the most complicated block. They literally have five settings that change all kinds of parameters. So let me explain to you exactly what they do. Now, the very first setting is going to be the target length. And actually, this right here is pretty much how long does the spring want to be? So when you actually, you know, activate these, as you can see, the spring with a higher target length wants to be longer and the one with a lower target length wants to be smaller. But actually, all of these springs can still get the exact same length apart. So when we start pulling these up, as you can see, they all get the exact same length. And actually, another thing that's going to be pretty interesting is that actually, they can also all compress exactly as much as you can see right here. But they want to be the length that you set that to. So you might be wondering, what does it mean when you actually change the max length, the next setting? Well, as you can see, all of these right here have the exact same target length. And actually, that means that they just want to be the exact same height. But when we actually start pulling on these, as you can see, the one with the default setting only gets that long. The one with a higher max length gets way longer. And the one with a lower gets way shorter. And actually, one thing that is pretty interesting is that this block right here has a max length of 11 and a target length of 10. You can make them very close together, which means when you start pulling on it, it doesn't really even move anywhere. Like it can only move one block. Now, exactly like the max length, we have minimum length. And when you change this, as you can see, when you just drop these, they are all the exact same length. But when you actually start pushing these down, as you can see, the one that has a higher minimum length will not compress down nearly as far. Now, the one with the lower minimum length actually glitches out almost every single time, so be careful with that setting. Now, those settings are all pretty easy to understand, but next up, we have stiffness and damping, which are a little bit more complicated. So starting off with stiffness, it's actually a pretty cool setting. So when you actually up the stiffness, as you can see, the wire actually gets thicker. And when I unanchor these blocks, as you can see, the one that has the lowest possible stiffness literally instantly contracted. So the stiffness actually means how many forces can the spring take before it like starts to bounce or move or anything like that. So if I actually start to pull on the default one, the higher one and the lower one at the exact same time, the one that has a higher stiffness really doesn't even want to get pulled out. But the one that has the lowest stiffness, I mean, there is literally no force to go around. So if you have a build that needs to absorb a lot of weight, you're going to want to up the stiffness. And to show you exactly what that means, when I turn off this balloon, as you can see, it goes boing back together. When I do that with the one with the higher stiffness, it goes boing, kind of keeps going for a little while. And actually, more interestingly, is the one with the lower stiffness very slowly falls down. It's almost kind of weird to look at. Now, you might be wondering, what is the difference between stiffness and dampening? So let me tell you exactly what it is. The stiffness is the strength of the spring. And actually, the damping is how bouncy it is. So if I show you this right here, a -ba -da boom all these springs have different dampening, but they all kind of just went to the exact same spots. But actually, when I pull these apart, as you can see, they can still all attract the exact same forces. But the moment that I turn the balloon off, the default one is going to go aga boing. The one with a higher dampening is literally, it has no bounce to it. And actually, the one with the lowest dampening, oh, I'm ready. I'm excited. Boing. <laughs> it will keep like bouncing around kind of almost like a trampoline. Now, like I said, a trampoline. So right here, I actually built four of them all with different settings. So let me show you exactly what it does. Now, right here, we have the old way of building a spring. This is literally a default spring with all of the settings set to default. And actually kind of depressingly, when I drop this rock on there, uh, it just simply goes squish. <laughs> But then right here, we actually have a spring that almost has max stiffness, but actually no changes to the damping. So when I unanchor this one, oh, yeah, it literally really wants to be exactly at a certain height. And actually, when I drop this rock, as you can see, it will absorb those forces and it will actually bounce a little bit because these are very strong springs, but it's not really anything super bouncy if I'm being honest. And then next up, we have the springs that actually have the lowest damping, which means 
that they are pretty much like a trampoline. Super bouncy, but they have the default stiffness. And actually, when we drop this, actually, even before I drop it, just literally unanchoring it, these springs are so bouncy. But yeah, they can just simply not handle that weight. And then it's just like a squishy pancake. But then, finally, we actually have the springs that have minimum dampening. So they're kind of like a trampoline, but they have very much stiffness. And actually, this right here, I've got a feeling it's going to be the best one. So here we go. Three to one and a bounce, baby. As you can see, sorry, it actually glitched out. As you can see, this thing right here is like a perfect trampoline. It is super bouncy and it will actually keep bouncing over and over again, much like how a trampoline would. Now, the only problem is the block staying on top, but no matter what you do, this thing is just going to keep bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. Very cool stuff. Now, you might be wondering, how does this affect actual builds? So right here, I have a card that is built with the old springs. Now, this right here is not a suspension system because you could actually build proper suspension systems in the past. But this right here is just a very, very simple car with four springs, four wheels, and that's about it. And actually, when I tried to drive this thing, oh, this is going to be so sad. As you can see, it's a, it's a wonky, wobbly mess. I mean, the springs have absolutely no strength to them. They really don't do all that much, and it's kind of a sad situation, let's be honest. Like, I feel like I'm bumping even more than I would be without the springs. And actually, I want to show you why this is, because the old springs, this is going to sound crazy, but one spring could not carry one metal block. It would literally go to its maximum contraction, and I mean, there is no more bounce in this thing. There is n This thing is not going to do anything. Now, if your build was, I don't know, about as heavy as a wood block, like, yeah, it's still got a little bit of bounce in there, but it's already not that much. The old springs are extremely weak. So when we actually lower the dampening a little bit and we actually up the stiffness by a lot, what you get are springs that can actually handle the weight and the forces of a car. So here we go. As you can see, these springs are actually bouncing up and down as we are driving over these wooden blocks. Now, is this a perfect suspension system? Well, far from it, because we're only using springs. But like I said, it is a thousand times better than our previous option. And that right there is just about everything there is to know about all the new blocks in the latest update. Now, I know there's a lot to take in, but there are so many builds that are now possible that were literally impossible before. So if you like this showcase, please like the video and subscribe to the channel because we're gonna be covering everything there is to build with springs, wires, and ropes for the next years.